you, everybody in this room, to focus how good God has been to you this week. Think about what this day about resurrection day is. What this day means. We need to bring in the spirit of this day. I just need y'all just to focus. Can we all get water cold? So we can have a good service. Because he's been so good. If you know he's been good, and all you got to say in your soul is say thank you. I'm about to turn it back over to the hand, to the minister of music. After that, we go with scripture and prayer.
Resurrection Sunday that he have allowed us to be in the land of the living. Amen. Aren't you glad to be here today? Amen. A lot of people wait till people do things for you to be glad. And I tell you, if you open your eyes up in the morning, you ought to be glad. Amen. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. We're certainly glad to see all of our officers, our ministers, just everyone that made up this beautiful congregation on this Resurrection Sunday morning during the pandemic of COVID. Amen. We could be at home, we could be in the hospital, but thank God we are in his house. Definitely not to forget all of those that left us through COVID. Yes. But guess yes. what? They just beat us getting home with the Lord. Yes. And as surely as you live, yes. you'll get your chance to go home and be with the Lord too. Yes. Amen. Certainly again, we want to praise God for this day. This is the day that he has made. Yes. And we should rejoice and be glad. Yes. I want to thank our praise team for a splendid job this yes. morning. Yes. Give them a hand. Sometimes we, sometime we, we panic and we don't know that God is working. Amen. Things we think that it should be like God has a way that he wants it. Thank you, Mother. Amen. Just happy to see it. I want to uh, have a, if you haven't paid your $58, you still can do so. Amen. We caught up the cutoff. It's never, it's never a cutoff for $58. And somebody may say, well, if March is over now, but it's just been extended to April, May, and June. Amen. So that you may have time, and I want to thank Deacon Danny White for his $58. Amen. And also, I want to praise God for Deacon White. He's been in the hospital this past week. Amen. And the Lord has brought him back again. Y'all ought to be happy for him this week. I don't care how bad y'all might as well realize right now, Mother White, but that Deacon White is not gonna sit down. He's not gonna lay down. He's gonna keep on pressing his <laughs> So I can stop. I won't stop telling him just stay at home and rest, because he ain't hearing that. He's gonna keep on pressing his way. And I'll tell you what. My great great grandmama, she lived to be 108. When she did get sick and she was in the bed, she used to tell her, Get me out of this bed. Get me out of this bed. And sometimes we put on the porch, and sometimes we sit in the living room. But I ain't ready to lay down yet. Amen. Thank you for everything. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, and this is Easter Sunday morning. Amen. Everybody got their helmet at home and they dressing. Amen. Chitlin. Big feet, ears. <laughs> Black eyed feet with pigtails. Everybody got all that at home. Amen. Real. Somebody said real. All right. I'm going to let you go so you can go eat. But I want to share with you the greatest story that has ever been told. And it starts in Matthew chapter number 28. Chapter number 28. And I'm going to read for the sake of time. start with verse 6. For he is not here, for he is risen. And he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Verse 7, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you unto Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. 
I want I want to end my reading there, and I want to talk from just a subject of there's good news from the cemetery. There is good news from the cemetery. Good news from the cemetery. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for this preaching privilege that you have allowed us to stand before your people. We ask now that you shower us with your anointing. Give us the words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes. Good news from the cemetery. Good news is always a desirable thing amongst anyone. Anyone in life wants to hear some good news. Amen. We all love good news. Yes. It might be that someone we love is coming to visit. Yes. That's good news. Yes. It might be that someone uh, that we thought have forgotten about us that we love is coming to visit. That's good news. Good news. It might be that the prayer has been answered that we have been praying for. That's good news. It might be uh, that the stimulus check has finally arrived. That's good news. It might, it, it, it might be that I, I've gotten a bonus on my job. That's good news. It might be the bad prognosis that I received from my doctor's visit was not so. That's good news. But one thing about good news, it makes us all happy. But Sometimes good news does not come from likely sources. Sometimes we can find good news in places that we never thought good news would come from. Uh, there, uh, the good news when you're sitting in your house and it's 30 degrees outside. And the meteorologists tell you on Monday uh, it's going to be 30, but towards the end of the week it's going to be 60 and 70 degrees. That's good news. But my brothers and sisters, on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to tell you that there is some good news from the cemetery. All right. And the good news is, he is not here. Look at the reporters that were left here to report this news. It was not Don Lemon. It was not Peter Jennings. It was not Ted Koppel. But it was two ladies. Mary Magdalene, one by name, that were left to give a report about Jesus. Uh, and I don't know about y'all, I know we have people that don't like to hear women give their report. Uh -huh. I let that sink in. Uh -huh. And they say women cannot tell the good news. But I come to tell you, after he rose, the first people he told to go tell what's up with I thought I'll have a few women in here today. So after this, after this bad night that he had had, and during this bad night, uh, he was drugged from courtroom to courtroom. During this bad night, he was interrogated. He, 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 he was a uh, 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 spit on even when he was locked in jail. The Bible says that that Pilate put a, 
a, a motion on the floor before the people. Yeah. All right. When Jesus was in jail and asked them, who do you want me to release? Yeah. Now you remember the story, not only Jesus was in jail that day, but that was a notable, mm -hmm. a notable, a, uh, what I'm gonna call a notable uh, convicted criminal in jail with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. By the name of Barabbas. Yeah. And the Bible says that that Barabbas was a convicted, I like to call him a intoxicated doer of Rome. And we realize that Jesus never done anything wrong. All he done was the good for the people. But on this particular day, they left it in the hands of the people. Who should we release from prison? Should we release Jesus of Nazareth or should we release Barabbas, the convicted criminal? And all of the people unanimously said, release Barabbas. Isn't that something, my brothers and sisters? That a man that had never did anything wrong. Yeah. A man that had, the man that always tried to find a way to do something good when put before or put as an example or put as an obstacle or as a measuring tool, who should we release? And they said, release Barabbas. Yeah. At first, the scripture used to make me mad when I read that they released a convicted yeah. thief. A convicted criminal it used to make me mad. That why would they leave Jesus in jail and let him out? But I'm glad they let Barabbas out. Yeah. Yeah. I said I'm glad they let Barabbas out. Yeah. Because Barabbas yeah. was a type symbolic of every one of us in this room. Yeah. That we all were guilty for something. Yeah. That we all was criminals on some kind of plateau. Yeah. But thanks be unto God, although Jesus was in prison, they still recognized his mercy and his grace. And the people said, let Barabbas out. I don't know about y'all, I'm so glad that I should be in jail, I should be in prison. But thank be unto God that the, that the warden in the air decided, let me out. Yeah. I don't know if anybody in here ever been to jail for real, <laughs> ever been to prison for real, but it got to feel good when you can get out of jail, even when you're wrong. Oh, y'all missed it right there. Even when you're guilty, even when you've done what they said you did, even though you were caught red-handed, I thanks be unto God that I still was able to get out of jail. Not saying that you were, that you didn't do nothing wrong, not saying that they lied on you, but I wonder if there's anybody here that there's some things you've done in your life that you should have been sentenced for it a long time ago. I wish I didn't have a lot of truth in Easter Sunday Christians in here, but if you would have been, if you would have been sentenced for it a long time ago, that you would have still been up in jail. But you know how they said they put him in jail and snatched the bars out from under it, meaning that you should be supposed to be in there the rest of your day. But because of what I would call uh, the mercy of God, yeah. you are out of jail. Yeah. Often say, y'all, I don't never want to go to jail. I don't know about you, I love being free. Yeah. See, in jail, you can't take a shower by yourself. Amen. In jail, you can't even use the bathroom by yourself. Amen. Now, can you imagine that? Now, now, can you imagine being incarcerated, locked up, and somebody want to turn the lights out at 9 o'clock? <laughs> somebody want to serve you Something that they call dressing, but it looked like spam. <laughs> but here, he's released, but now here, there's good news from the cemetery. All right. 
Here's some of the good news that you may learn if you if you get close enough to be in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a cemetery. Uh, I don't. I know you don't. Everybody don't frequent cemeteries. Nobody in their right mind would want to go to a cemetery on a regular basis. But here, I have some news for you. That one of the things that you ought to know that is good news from the cemetery is that death has met its match. Jesus was crucified on the cross. And he was crucified with two thieves on each side of him. And you know the record said they buried him and they put him in the grave. And he stayed there all night Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and early Sunday morning he got up. But it says here in the Bible, it says that at the end of the Sabbath, that Mary Magdalene and Mary came to the grave to see Jesus. And when they came, they were expecting to see him in his grave. But when they got there, the Bible says that uh, the stone was rolled away. And when they got there, they, wasn't, they were expecting to see the stone there. And when they got there, they, they saw Jesus. Uh, they saw the angel, and the angel said, Fear, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. When Jesus got up, other folk had to die. For they died. And it said, the angel answered out and said to the woman, Fear not, for I know what you're looking for. But I want to tell you, he's not here. I know what you're looking for. And and sometimes uh, we don't find what we expect to find. Yeah. All right. The good news is that Jesus had defeated death. Yeah. Uh, he, he, Jesus was dead, but now he's not dead anymore. All right. And not only is that good news from the cemetery that death has met his match, not only that, it is also, some good news from the cemetery is that the good news, fear, has vanished. For he told them to fear not. How many know when you don't expect sometimes to see what you're looking for, that you'll be afraid? Uh, 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 and, and I want to tell you the truth of the matter. Sometimes God can bless you beyond measure. That it would make you afraid. Yeah. Anybody ever got something that was beyond measure and when you looked at it, it had your name on it, but you say, is this real? Yeah. Is this really going on in my life? Is, could this really be? Because I'm coming to tell you, all bad news don't make you afraid. Sometimes some good news will make you afraid. Sometimes good news will make you afraid. And he said that all fear is gone. When Jesus died, the disciples became frightened and disoriented. But Jesus told them to fear not. In Matthew chapter 28 verses 5 and 6. It says the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here for he is risen just as he said, come see the place where he used to lay. And what writer says that when they went in the tomb where Jesus was laying, that uh, the grave clothes that they had put on Jesus before they buried him, that they said that at the end of where his feet was laying, that Jesus, before he left out, took off his grave clothes. And you know what mama always taught us when they do when we take off them clothes? That Jesus. Can't you see him in there? Everything is right. He's not in a hurry. It's just now the beginning of, of, of Sunday morning. But he said, before I go out, I want to leave everything in here. 
And then in many a days you say, well, I done, I, I done give up. I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going on about my business. But you got to learn how to work on you. I often tell the women here at church, the problem is you have to obey your husband. Did I, come on, brother. Come on. To your own brother. I wish I had some brother in my friend. I hear Deacon Buckley. You better not say that too loud. She's right there behind you. I told Deacon Buckley the other day, I said, Your wife's supposed to ask you everything before she do Get out the bed in the middle of the night, she's going to tell her, I'm just going to the bathroom. <laughs> Whatever it is, she goes like, well, I'm just going down to the store. What you doing after that? Going to the store and stop here and I'll be right back. <laughs> and I told me you can cover that. But Sister Sabrina had another comeback. <laughs> she looked at her and said, Reverend, we're going to get you killed. <laughs> from the cemetery. The hope has been reborn. Desperate, gloom, misery were the order of the day until they realized that Jesus was alive and their hope blossomed. And I want to tell you today that I don't care how bad your present may be, you need to learn how to keep hope in your future. Who am I talking to this morning? I don't care how bad your right now or your reality may be. One thing I want you to hold on to is your hope. Deep, I don't care how many times you have to go to the doctor or to the hospital. You need to go in with hope. And why are you in there? You need to be hope. I want to say anybody, I don't care how long you've been waiting on that breakthrough to come through. That breakthrough may have not come through right now for you, but you need to have the what I would call the spiritual motivation, the spiritual self-motivation of hope. Because if I can hope for it, then I won't lose my mind waiting on it. Because hope says, although it's not here, I feel like preaching right now. Although it's not here right now, I'm still believing that it's going to come when I need it. I often say, we, 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 even this day and age, we live in. Yeah. There needs to be some hope in our spirit. Hope says that it's going to change. Yeah. Hope says, I don't know when it's going to change, yeah. but it's going to change. Yeah. Hope says, I don't know the exact day, the moment, Sister Smith, but it's going to come through for me. Yeah. And how many know when you're leaning and trusting on God, seem like when what you were waiting on came through when you really needed the most. Yeah. I have hope. I have hope one day, y'all. Yeah. That one day we're going to wake up. And I ain't got to look for no mask. Y'all better, y'all better hear me shout out. I got hope one day that, 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 that since they uh, made a vaccination for coronavirus, I got hope, y'all, that one day, here soon, I said if they can make one for coronavirus, God can give them the intelligence to make one for cancer. I got hope that I know it's been here a long time, but if they, if they can make one for corona, God can let them make one for cancer. And not only that, I got hope that God can let them make one for sugar diabetes. He can make one for, for, for all. Let me tell you something about hope. Remember, 
remember you were here since we're here. Remember when coronavirus first started? Yeah. Didn't nobody know what to do. Yeah. Everybody was scared. Yeah. And you would get messed up. There were two types of reporters that messed me up. The ones on TV and the ones right around our neighborhood. Okay. Girl, they say, this gonna happen, this gonna happen, and this gonna happen. And I had one local unpaid reporter tell me, you better go to the grocery store and buy all the food. I ain't got to the toilet paper yet, y'all. Buy all the food because it's gonna get so bad that all the grocery stores go close. And I looked at them and I thought about it. I said, no, it may get bad, but my father's not going to leave me without yeah. something. Yeah. I don't know about y'all in here. I, I done been in here 50 years. I ain't never had to go without something to eat. Yeah. Guess what? It may not be what your mind delectably wanted, but guess what? You had something to eat to keep you here and get you strength. Yeah. Not on that. Uh, they say go buy all the food. Oh, and I, this is why you can't listen to unpaid reporters. <laughs> they say go get all. They didn't tell us they started getting all the toilet paper. <laughs> now since we're here, can I go here, y'all? Now, if they run out of food, that's one problem. But if they run out of toilet paper, that ain't no problem, y'all. Y'all ain't, ain't come from where I come from. Because, guess what? I got some old Flint Journal newspapers at the house. And guess what? When you tear them and rub them together, like y'all ain't hear me like this. It softens up just. God give you strip as long as he got trees with leaves. As long as he got all that. I don't have. I can't believe somebody worried over toilet paper. That's my least worry in the world. All right, let's go. So there's good hope. So there's the good news from the cemetery. One is ah uh, uh, that that death has been defeated. Yeah. And the good news is that fear is all gone. Yeah. And that hope. It has been reborn. And, and last but not least is that the death, death has met its match. Meaning that when they buried him, everybody, no one expected to see him again. Just like we do in this present age, when we bury someone, no one expects to see that person on this side of the ground again. So when they saw him, remember I told you that they were afraid. And he told the ladies, y'all, uh, I'm going to put this in here for free. It was Sunday morning when he talked to them just before they so they talked about ladies' night. Ladies ain't got no night. Ladies got a day. Because it was the ladies that told the men about the light. Uh, what do you mean, preacher, that although it was so early in the morning, it was dark, but they had the news about the light. Yes. For Jesus said that I am yes, the light of the world. Ah, uh, the stone was rolled away. Ah, uh, not to let Jesus out, but to let people know that he was gone. Because how many know that the stone could not hold Jesus? How many know that uh, the stone could not hold him because he was a rock in the middle of a rock. And the stone, they rolled it away. Uh, the angel
angel and let the people know yeah. that the tomb was empty. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, that's good news. Yeah. And not only was it empty, for Jesus yeah. had risen yeah. from the dead. Yeah. So therefore we have the miracle, the miracle of the stone being rolled away. And then we have the message from the women saying that Jesus is not here anymore. And not only that, we have now the manifestation that Jesus revealed himself to the women who came to the tomb. Because when they saw him, they thought it was a ghost. But Jesus said, be not afraid. For it is I. Yeah. Look at somebody on this resurrection morning and let them know that whatever may happen in your life, yeah. that if God is behind it, yeah. then you need not to be afraid. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes things don't turn out like we think they ought to turn out. Yeah. But I want to tell you, don't worry about the process. Yeah. You just hold on to the promise. Yeah, yeah. As I get ready to leave you on this resurrection morning, there are some people that cannot get past the process. Yeah. That you always worried about how things are going to develop. Yeah. But I want you to know this morning that it's not about the process, yeah. but it's all about the promise. Yeah. Because if the Lord said that it's going to happen, then guess what? It's going to happen. For the Bible said that God is a God that he cannot lie. So if God says that it's going to come to pass, you need to learn how to keep some hope in your journey. You need to learn how to keep uh, some motivation in your spirit. Yeah. That everybody else may be yeah. worried and all been out of shape. Yeah. But because of you, what you know, that you know that you know. Yeah. That you can uh, encourage yourself while you're on yeah. the journey. Yeah. And although things may not be going like you designed to go, but you can encourage yourself and say, Lord, hold my hand. While I run this race, because I don't want to run this race in vain. And sometimes while you're traveling to your destiny, you got to learn how to sing you a song. And how many know when you're down, a good old song will pick you up and give you inspiration for your journey. And I'm wondering as I get ready to leave you today, is there anybody here that has to sing a song to your own self? You may not have a Grammy Award. You may not have a Stellar Award. You may not win in the singing contest. But it's something about when the Lord give you a song in your spirit that it will give you strength for your journey. And I don't know about y'all, but every now and then I have to sing the whole song. And that song says, I'm so glad trouble don't last always have I got a witness and sometimes you got to sing that song till you get happy all by yourself and I'm on the pause right here this morning and I wonder is there anybody here that when you sing your own song you can be by yourself at home and sing your own self happy. Have I got any help in here? Look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, I have some good news. The good news is that the bad news was not true. Have I got a witness here? And not only do we have the miracle, 
I feel like preaching this morning, y'all. Not only do we have the message to the women, not only do we have the manifestation, but we also have the misinformation. Because y'all remember, the government was so mad that Jesus said he was going to rise, that, the, that, that they tried to bribe the, the dog and tell them to tell the people that he is still dead. But I don't know about y'all, I'm so glad. Doesn't matter what people may say. Doesn't matter what people may think. I believe that he got up. Have I got a witness here? Doesn't matter what the devil may say. Doesn't matter what naysayers may say. Doesn't matter what the liar may say. I still believe, I feel good now, that he got up. How do you know he got up? Because I feel it inside of me. We got the misinformation. We got the, we got the miracle, the message, the manifestation, and the misinformation. Not last but not least, have the mandate that he left in Matthew 28 and verse 19 when he told his disciples to go ye therefore in all the world and preach my gospel to every creature he that believeth and he is baptized teach him to deserve all things that I in the name of the Father, baptizing them in the name of the Son, baptizing them in the name of the Holy Ghost. Can I ask you a question? Have you already been to the water? Have you already been baptized?
charge. Holy Ghost in the room. Amen. We get the program and hold it. This is what I've been waiting on. Yeah. 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 I, ain't, I ain't talking about no form, fashion, no show, nobody trying to make a name. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been waiting on. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost to come. Amen. We've been through so much. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost to show up. get up and play When they are trying to make a name for themselves, make folks shout and all that. I ain't trying to make nobody shout. I'm trying to get people close to God. Everyone in here, all of us gonna get a chance. And y'all don't think, like, as the old folks tell us in this Bible tell us, we're going to stand before the Lord. Yeah. And we're going to give it a yeah. 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 You, better, you better get your house ready now. Yeah. We pray for all of those that are sick, shedding, and those that got COVID. Yeah. We pray. I'm right, matter of fact, right now, the Spirit wants to pray. Where you at? We can't hold hands. But I want you to just hold on to yourself. Yeah. God is still a miracle worker. He's still a way out of no way. I want you to just hold yourself right now. I'm going to pray. I'm telling you, God's spirit is in this room. Father, Thank you for each and every one of your name by name. Thank you, Lord. 
ask a special blessing over every household that 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 press their way out today on Resurrection Sunday. I ask that we that we become intoxicated with hope. That no matter how we left our house, that we have enough hope that when we get from your house back to our house, that things going to be turned around. Thank you for your house of hope. Devil, we want you to know we identify you. We identify you. You can't hide. There's no cover big enough for you to come up here. You, we uncover you today. Thank you, Jesus. Since you've been exposed, you might as well leave. Leave us alone. Leave our children alone. Leave our minds alone. Leave our money. Leave us alone. each and every one's healing in here today. Some folk were healed in their mind, their spirit, their soul, their body. Thank you right now. And Master, when, when we come down to our last day in this world, when our hour has come down to our last moment, we want our souls to be ready. Some people don't know what it means, Master, but I want to really hear you say, well done. Master, I don't want to live in hell and die and go to hell. But a lot of things down here I don't understand, but Master, when I get up a little higher, I guess you explain it to me. But if you don't, I'd be glad to be in your kingdom. I just want to, I just want to find your throne so I can bow down before you. I see Grandma and Big Mama and Papa and them later, but I want to see you first. Bow down before you. We give your name all the praise, honor, and glory on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Thank you for what you've done for us. We thank God for these two that have come. I'm not coming down. We got. I know we love, but y'all, we got. When y'all was praying too, we still got a social distance. If you ask God while you're praying for somebody 20 feet away, He go hear your prayer. Y'all understand, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I thank God for this young lady and her son, her grandson. She's been coming here a good while now. And we thank God that God has led her this way. And this young man is special. He talks to me every Sunday after church. Yeah. He got a big willing heart. He already, he already want to do what these children do here. Yeah. What's your name again, young man? Rayshawn. I thank God for you. And how old are you? Eleven years old.
accept him as your personal Savior. Yes. Amen. Amen.
familiar time, I'm sorry. Look right quick, I'm sorry, y'all know the spirit of it. Father, we thank you for this bread and this cup. We ask that you bless it right now in Jesus' name. On this Resurrection Sunday, you sat down with your disciples, break bread, and gave thanks. And take, this is my body which was broken for you. We bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. They're going to come quickly. Where are all our deacons at? All our deacons can help so we can get it out of the way rapidly.
deacon job. Guess what? You're not going to find in no Bible where no deacon served no communion. There's the preachers. But we have deacons serve the communion because we delegate the honor to them to serve the communion. But all of us ought to be servants. All of us ought to be servants. We, we ready?
Block in, you need to move your car. We got people blocked in, you need to move your car. 